Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to be talking about water purification or disinfection. What I have here on the table is the four more commonly used methods. Boiling, adding chemicals to the water, a UV light, and of course filtration. I'll talk about the benefits, the pros, and the cons. When we talk about water purification, we're generally talking about screening or filtering something out of the water, perhaps contaminants or bacteria. Whereas when we talk about disinfection, we're actually talking about killing stuff off, perhaps viruses or parasites. But the goal is the same. It's obviously to take questionable drinking water and convert it into safe drinking water. Now currently, FEMA recommends one gallon of water per person per day if you are storing water at home. And if you're using that water for cooking and hygiene, it may not be enough. You may need to actually increase the amount of water you're storing. If you're taking a bird bath in it, brushing your teeth, washing your face, uh, it may not be adequate. But my other point's a little bit different. If you were going into the backcountry, let's say, on an, ex on an extended trip, you would either need to purify water or disinfect it because it would be very difficult to carry enough water with you. So having said that, let's go around the table and let's talk about each method. Over here we have boiling. It's obviously been around the longest. It works. It's very effective. But it does have some drawbacks. The first is the obvious. You need a heat source to bring the water up to temperature and you also need a metal container. Now, another drawback is that, let's say the water had debris in it, or contaminants, or insects, or bugs. The boiling is not going to do anything for that, but it will be biologically safe to drink. So, that's one of the things about boiling. It really does little for water clarity. Now, in the back, we have some several different chemicals. Uh, the first is just household bleach. This is the unscented, just plain Clorox. I also have some chlorine dioxide tablets, two different brands. And in the front here, in these little bottles, I have uh, iodine. These are iodine tablets. So you could, you could use those to obviously disinfect water. Now in my research, according to the CDC, they said that Clorox wasn't as effective against uh, Cryptosporidium and Giardia. And what they actually recommended is that you use chlorine dioxide tablets to address that issue if you had any, uh, any concerns with that. But anyway, let's say you wanted to disinfect a gallon of water. You would take uh, an eyedropper, that's what I like to use, this one has graduation uh, marks in it. And you would put eight drops of water, or excuse me, eight drops of bleach into a gallon of water, agitate it, and let it sit for 30 minutes and you should be good to go. Now that's for uh, clear water. If the water is cloudy, you're going to have to bump that up and increase that to 16 drops or 1.5 milliliters of the unscented liquid bleach. Again, you would agitate the water, stir it up real nice, let it sit for 30 minutes and you should be good to go. Now the issue associated with using chemicals is the obvious, especially with bleach. There's going to be um, a little bit of a taste factor. Now the tablets in the back really are not too bad with uh, taste, but the iodine is. Uh, you, can, you can definitely taste the iodine in there. The other issue with uh, using chemicals, it's not going to do anything for debris in the water, uh, insects or anything like that, but it will render the water biologically safe to drink. Now let's move on to another method which is uh, really popular with uh, backpackers. Over here we have a Sturry Pen Adventure. Um, I like it. it. It's a nice method to supplement with um, another method. And it's very easy to use. You would just press the button, remove this cap here of course, insert it into an algae bottle, or your canteen and hold it there for a specified amount of time and this one here will actually uh, do both. It will kill the bacteria and it will also uh, kill off any viruses in the water. It actually destroys the, the uh, DNA in both bacteria and viruses. 
but it does have a con. The obvious is it takes batteries. So if something were to go wrong with the batteries, you would be without a device. It also is not going to do anything for water clarity. So let's move on to filtration. I have several different ones on the table. This is a little frontier that I keep in my vehicle. It's good for about uh, 20 gallons of water. I believe this one is a 0 0.2 microns. This is my new favorite. This is a Sawyer Squeeze. It is 0 0.1 microns and it is good for 1 million gallons so long as you maintain it and backwash it. Back here is one I've been using for a few years. It is a Catadyne pocket filter. Now I'm not sure why they call it a pocket filter because this thing is big, bulky, and heavy. But I guess you could get it into a cargo pocket. Now this one is a ceramic filter. It's good for 10,000 gallons and it is a 0 0.2 micron filter. Now I, I also have a coffee filter here that I would wrap around this part here, the part that goes into the water as an added filtration step. And in the back here I have another uh, filter. This one's an accessory I purchased to go with the Catadyne and I would add carbon. I would add charcoal to it and this actually improves the taste of the water and removes odor. So this is another added filtration step and this really gives me very high quality water uh, when, I, uh, when, I, when I use it to filter. Now on the back here I have a gravity system and I can't really speak to this one because obviously it's still in the box and I haven't used it but I'll show you what it looks like there. I'll just give you a picture of it and it's very easy to use. It's, it's a dirty bag, a clean bag, the hose goes in between and the filter and it just drips down and it would filter your water. This one here is 0 0.1 microns and it's good for a million gallons, again, so long as you maintain it and you backwash it. Now, filtration does have an issue and it will not capture viruses. So if you were in a part of the world where you were concerned about viruses or a part of the country, then you would need to use your filtration in conjunction with either the stirry pen, chemicals, tablets, iodine, to, to address any concerns you might have with, um, with filtration. Now I have heard some cons related to this filter here and I have used this in cold weather but I have, I've, uh, there's been some reviews anyway that have, people have talked about the possibility and I think it's only a possibility of the ceramic filter cracking inside and I think for that to happen you would actually have to keep the entire chamber flooded in extreme cold weather for it to get enough expansion for that to happen but if you follow the uh, the instructions and you pump it dry and you uh, take care of it um, I've used it many times in cold weather I've never had an issue now I've had I've had an issue with the uh, with the hoses kind of freezing up as the uh, ice crystallizes in here and they get kind of stiff I've I've had that issue happen but uh, as long as you uh, you empty this out, you're not going to have any problems with it um, with it cracking on you. Now let's go around the table one more time. We'll do we'll do a summary, and then uh, we'll close out. But of course, you can you can boil water to disinfect it. It works fine. You can add chemicals to your water to disinfect it. You can use a UV light to destroy the microorganisms in the water, or you can use the various filtration methods that I have on the table to uh, filter your water and actually improve the clarity of it as well. Now, in the end, I think you're going to want to use a combination. Perhaps uh, bring a small bottle of bleach with you, have the sturdy pen as a backup, or some tablets uh, to give you more of a foolproof uh, method of filtering or disinfecting your water but you're going to want to do your own research and visit some of the more reputable websites uh, perhaps the CDC, FEMA or the Red Cross and you also want to investigate the region that you're going to be traveling to but in short you want to have multiple options at your disposal and this concludes my presentation I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time thanks